Hello everyone and good day! Welcome to the orientation on the Learning Action Cell resource package on mobile technology for teachers and its digital citizenship resources for the implementers of the DepEd Alternative Learning System or ALS. This video is meant to familiarize DepEd ALS trainers throughout the country including LAC facilitators on the ALS MT40 LAC resource package in order to facilitate the efficient delivery of LAC sessions on MT40. The LAC resource package was developed by the ALS Task Force in collaboration with UNICEF Philippines and Simeo Inotech in line with the Department of Education's goal to strengthen learning delivery under the K-12 Basic Education Program and to fully support the continuing professional development of ALS teachers. With the inclusion of Learning Strand 6, Digital Citizenship as a core competency in the ALS K-12 basic education curriculum, and the shift to online and blended learning due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the LAC resource package on MT40 is a valuable tool that will help ALS teachers and learners to adapt to and maximize the many emerging opportunities of the digital world. This orientation video includes the messages from Deputy Assistant Secretary GHS Ambat and Simeo Inotech Center Director Ramon Sibakani, which were delivered during the opening of an orientation and planning program held in June 2021, as well as the closing remarks from Director Marilet Almeida, Head of the Deped ALS Task Force, and Mr. Izzy Feingold, the Chief of Education of UNICEF Philippines. In between these messages are 1. The presentations on the overview of TSL's 2.0 project and the process undertaken to develop the ALS MT40 LAC resources. Second, the introduction to the ALS LAC resource package, and then the details of the LAC session guides. To all the participants of this orientation and planning session for the utilization of uh, the LAC resources for MT40, a pleasant morning to all of you. Good morning as well to our partners from UNICEF and Simeo Inotech. As you may all know, part of the innovations in ALS is the introduction of Learning Strand 6, which is on digital citizenship. In the past two years, we have struggled with the learning resources uh, for, this, for this important strand. With the help of our partners, as I mentioned, Simeo and Inotech, they developed, they helped us develop a learning resources uh, for MT40 and I do understand that you have been undergoing orientations and trainings uh, to have this uh, resources um, as, as I've said developed and now uh, you will be uh, finally using and training our 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 implementers on how to use this and uh, as they are guided uh, in their lab sessions so um, Please uh, bear in mind that this is all part of AS 2.0 as we pursue uh, our goals in ensuring that AS is, um, is does not remain second class um, in, the, in, in the coming years. And also, this is part of um, Sulong Edukalidad where we want to ensure that our teachers are continuous, continuously retooled, upskilled uh, through various, through various uh, modalities, through various uh, methodologies such as the LAC sessions. So uh, I wish you all well, take good care of yourself, and um, I look forward to your active participation in this uh, orientation and planning session. Good morning. Good morning uh, to our uh, ALS implementers and program partners from uh, the FED and uh, UNICEF. Uh, uh, welcome to this orientation and planning session for the pilot rollout of the DepEd ALS uh, LAC resource package on the MP40. Uh, a little over uh, two weeks ago, we had the uh, turnover and orientation program for the ALS uh, where, elsewhere, teaching and learning uh, resource package. And uh, we had the uh, Pulse ALS implementers uh, from 30 pilot community centers who received the uh, ALSWare resource package uh, last month. And uh, this morning, uh, 
uh, this uh, program is uh, dedicated to the uh, LAC resource package, which is the highlight of uh, today's event. The LAC resource package, uh, LAC meaning uh, learning action cell, is a product of collaborative efforts of uh, selected uh, ALS implementers and our content experts under the technical uh, leadership of DepEd, UNICEF, and uh, Inatech. As I mentioned, uh, the Learning Action Cell, or LAC, it has had a long history uh, in the Department of Education, uh, spanning about 30 to 35 years. It was uh, initiated as a uh, capacity building uh, activity uh, for the formal education system, starting with the elementary education. But uh, this time, uh, we are using the uh, uh, LAC, the Learning Action Cell, as a uh, capacity building tool for the uh, ALS uh, program. The LAC resource package is an important and pioneering step forward to operationalize the LAC as a modality for capacity building, specifically for ALS implementers. It is our hope that the lessons learned from the project will drive and inspire the development of more uh, LAC session guides on digital citizenship and other learning strands under the DepEd uh, ALS basic education curriculum. This package maximizes the use of the mobile technology for teachers or MT40 for short resources developed by Inotech over a number of years and uh, we are making them accessible to ALS implementers. The package uh, seeks to complement other capacity building initiatives of the DepEd to enhance the digital literacy competencies of ALS teachers in support of the new ALS K-12 curriculum, particularly the teaching of the new learning strand 6 on digital citizenship. We want to make sure that the ALS implementers get to uh, maximize the use of the LAC resource package and improve its uh, effectiveness and relevance. The package therefore includes a set of tools to ensure the pilot implementation phase is thoroughly monitored and uh, evaluated as an input to planning by DepEd for future scale-up. Through the data that the project team will be able to generate during the monitoring phase, the DepEd ALS task force would be in a better position to enhance the black resources in preparation for their nationwide rollout. This initiative would not have been possible without the active and constant participation of the ALS Task Force headed by uh, ASEC uh, G.H. Ambat and uh, Director uh, Marileta Almeida and the uh, ALS implementers uh, also from uh, uh, DepEd as well as our partner uh, over the years, uh, UNICEF. We know that there were many personal and uh, uh, other challenges brought about by the current uh, health situation. So I would like to sincerely thank all of you, our partners, for your tireless support and commitment. It is an honor for uh, Simio Inotech to be provided the opportunity to extend continuing technical assistance to the DepEd ALS Learning Continuity Plan as part of our commitment to support DepEd's ALS 2.0 reform agenda. We will continue to advocate for providing quality and flexible learning options to learners who may not have access or have dropped out of the formal school system due to various uh, circumstances in life. As a regional center for educational innovation and technology, we will support DepEd's efforts to achieve the SDG4 goal of inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Finally, let me thank all of you for uh, taking the time to attend today's event. We're all looking forward to your active participation today and during the monitoring activity in the next two months. Again, uh, welcome to the orientation and planning session. Uh, good morning once again. Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome to this webinar and thank you for spending your precious time with us today. My name is Yoli De La Salas from Simio Inotech 
and I'm here to give you an overview on why we are here. This Lock Orientation and Planning Workshop is being undertaken under the technical support to Deped Alts 2.0. This is being implemented under the six-year tripartite cooperation agreement among the DepEd, UNICEF Philippines, and Simio Inotech. Under the 2017 agreement, the first project was implemented with the DepEd Bureau of Learning Delivery for a, a comprehensive review of the multi-grade education program coupled with capacity building and provision of technology-enabled materials for multi-grade schools in Region 8. An expansion of the multi-grade project in response to COVID-19 pandemic was the second project implemented. The third project, under the same cooperation agreement, was the technical support to the Bank Samoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or the BARM Ministry of Basic Higher and Technical Education to develop a five-year roadmap on alternative learning modalities for house learners in Muslim Mindanao. Currently, we are happy to inform you that we're closely working with the DepEdAls Task Force on the fourth project, which is the technical support to ALS 2.0. The project aims to support program interventions as stated in the DEPED's Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan for ALS. These interventions include a set of capacity building activities on the use of mobile technology for teaching and learning and its resources on digital citizenship, plus technical assistance on the design and utilization of the ALS resource package for ALS teaching and learning. So why are we implementing these interventions? Component 1 in particular aims to enhance the, co the competencies of ALS key implementers on integrating digital citizenship and mobile technology for 21st century teaching and learning under Learning Strand 6 of the DEPED ALS K-12 Basic Education Curriculum. The capacity building focuses on the use of mobile technology in teaching and learning and in promoting digital citizenship and cyber wellness. It aims to deepen the knowledge and skills of ALS mobile teachers, instructional managers, ALS coordinators, education program supervisors, specialists, and other dis designated ALS personnel on digital citizenship. A national orientation on MT40 for 99 ALS implementers was conducted in December 2020, after which a LAC resource package on MT40 was designed and customized for the ALS teachers. This resource package consists of two LAC session guides, the first theme is about enhancing digital citizenship through MT40 and the second theme is about contextualization of e-citizenship learning packets. We conducted an orientation on the use of these LAX session guides on 22 March for the selected key trainers. The LAX session guides were then tried out in the school's divisions of Oriental Mindoro, Iligan City, and North Cotabato. Based on the trial results, the LAC session guides have been revised. To guide us trainers on the proper utilization of the MT40 LAC resource package, an orientation and planning session was designed for today. This orientation covers the plan for monitoring and evaluation of the LAC session implementation using the MT40 resource packets. On the other hand, component two on the right side of my slide aims to strengthen the ALS learning delivery using the new ALSWARE resource package to help ALS learners gain access to useful and relevant learning materials. For this purpose, the elsewhere turnover and orientation was conducted on June 8 to 9, 
2021 for the 30 uh, Community Learning Center recipients. And how are we going to achieve the ALS 2.0 project objectives? As mentioned earlier, there are two ways. One is through capacity building and provision of learning resources, which are the two basic components of the project. Component one, or the capacity building of ALS implementers, has three activities as shown in this slide. These include the MT40 National Orientation for ALS implementers, which was held last December via Zoom and Facebook Live. The second activity is the development and provision of digitized Slack session guides, which had been developed based on the content of the MT40 resource kit. We hope to start the national rollout of LAC session guides from July to August 2021. The third activity includes monitoring of LAC session guide utilization by the ALS implementers, which will immediately follow after the six-week utilization period. The monitoring results will serve as inputs to further improve the LAC resource package rollout and to inform the development of new LAC session guides. The data to be collected will help inform and further enhance the capacity building for all mobile teachers on using digital technologies to enhance teaching and learning. Well, uh, in this slide, activities 4 to 6 refer to component 2 of the project, which include, include provision of the learning resource package or the elsewhere. Our technical assistance in this component includes the identification of content, design and prototype development, and packaging of the elsewhere. The project developed a set of guidelines to inform the school's divisions and the regions on how to use the elsewhere, how to monitor its utilization, and how to maximize the benefits of elsewhere, and how to improve its usage in the community learning centers. Now, let me refresh you. And in reviewing the, some information about MT40. For the capacity building component, InnoTech's MT40 resource kit was used as the primary resource material. MT40, as oh, you may know, is an array of resource materials for teachers on using mobile technology for 21st century teaching and learning and in developing cyber wellness and digital citizenship among us learners and teachers. MT40 provides teachers with easy access to information, resources, examples, and best practices in using smartphones and tablets and other mobile devices for teaching and learning and for teachers' own personal and professional development. MT40 will equip our ALS teachers with basic knowledge and skills in using mobile devices, and using built-in applications, social networking, and blogging applications. And it will also foster collaboration among teachers in Southeast Asia. We have updated the MT40 collection of 10 eBooks. The second edition eBooks are now available in three platforms such as Android, Apple, and Windows. One of the ebooks is about cyber wellness and e citizenship, which has 10 learning packets that are aligned with international frameworks on digital citizenship. Each learning packet comprises of a teacher's guide and a PowerPoint deck that can be readily used adapted and modified for teaching digital literacy in the ALS context. All these materials in PDF and EPUB formats are uploaded in the MT40 website and can be downloaded for free by ALS teachers 
using the Inotech e-reader. Now, after completing the MT40 National Orientation, another form of capacity building the project wanted to focus on is the development of lock session guides to assist us learning facilitators in conducting lock sessions. Recognizing the importance of learning action cells or lock, the tripartite deemed, deemed it necessary to provide a tool for all ski trainers to continue their school-based learning ex exchange with all mobile teachers using the MT40 resource kit. The lock session guides were specifically designed for all teachers. For this purpose, a lock workshop was conducted to bring together key stakeholders and experts to develop session guides in adopting the e-citizenship learning packets to all contexts and to get them more acquainted on the MT40 resource package utilization. These session guides will be used during lock sessions at the community learning centers or during district level training for us facilitators, key trainers, and us coordinators. To give you a background on how we're able to identify the two lock session guides, first we gathered data from the ALS mobile teachers, district ALS coordinators, regional and division focus, education program supervisors, and other ALS practitioners on the possible black topics to support and improve teaching of digital citizenship. We conducted an online poll and we gathered feedback from all ski trainers who participated in the MT40 National Orientation last December. The identified lock session guide topics were finalized through consultation with all task force and UNICEF. After which, Simio Inotech together with the ALS Task Force finalized the process or the design for developing the lock session guides. And as agreed with the ALS Task Force, the lock session guide development went through four stages as shown in this slide. Stage one was the lock session guide writing. This involved drafting of the proposed outline of the lock session guides. Lock experts as well as uh, field implementers were engaged as co-writers and reviewers. Stage two involved the refinement of the lock session guides. The materials undergone several reviews by a team of reviewers and revised accordingly by the lock writers. Stage three refers to validation and tryout of the lock resource package in the three schools divisions. These tryouts were done both face-to-face -face and online. After which, the lock resource package was re revised based on the tryout results. It was, these were enhanced by the lock experts and reviewed and approved by Inotech, DepEd, and UNICEF. This comprised stage four or the finalization of lock resource package. So here's the end product. We are very pleased to launch and introduce to you today the lock resource package on MT40 and its digital citizenship resources. This is now ready for nationwide dissemination and implementation by the all ski trainers. You may also access the electronic copy through the ICT for ALS website. The pilot implementation of lock session guides in all regions will be monitored and evaluated by the project team with the intention of letting the all ski trainers to facilitate the lock sessions and gather data as inputs to further improve the lock resource package rollout to inform the development of new lock session guides for us, and also to assess the competency levels of all teachers before and after the lock sessions. Ms. Ori Santos, uh, 
the project manager of MT40, will help us further expound the lack, the lack session guide monitoring and evaluation plan uh, later this uh, afternoon. So I think that's all for me. I'd like to end by saying, may you have a meaningful and well-spent session today. Marami pong salamat! Hello, good day everyone. I am Katherine Toralba from Simeo Inotech and I would be giving a brief introduction about the LAC resource package on MP4D for us. Mm -hmm. Now, earlier, uh, Ma'am Yuli presented to you the end product of one of the major activities of the DS House 2.0 project, which is this, the LAC resource package for ALS 2.0 on MD40 and its digital citizenship resources. So, this LAC material is already available online for all our LAC implementers. So, you can visit the ICD uh, for ALS website for this. So from the pictures here, the LAC resource package is comprised of session guides, two in particular, some related um, resource materials, and a set of presentation slides. In this session, I'll be talking about some quick facts about the LAC resource package, some parts and features you need to take note of, and also I'll be discussing, um, explaining briefly the competency assessment form found in this LAC uh, material. So now let's start. As we all know, uh, digital citizenship has become increasingly popular, increasingly important these days, especially as the entire world was pushed or thrust into the digital, digital uh, universe because of the pandemic. Day in and day out, uh, so many of us are glued to our mobile devices, computers, the internet, for work, for learning, entertainment, and others. So even the ways uh, to teach and how children uh, learn have also changed. So almost everything in teaching and learning um, has a digital or online aspect to it. So this LAC resource package was developed with that in mind and more. So it focuses on topics related to digital citizenship to help the us teachers on this particular content and skill. So the LAC resource package is a two-part series of uh, LAC topics relevant uh, to the digital citizenship. And the aim of the resource package is to facilitate uh, the capacity building of teachers on digital citizenship, which is one of the learning strands of the learn ALS K-12 curriculum. And it also happens to be a necessary skill already uh, during this pandemic. And then the next uh, quick fact about the LAC resource package is that it was designed for the ALS context using content from the MD40 resource kit and is anchored on the four E's of adult learning. Now, let me expound on these five facts now. The first quick fact, which is uh, let the LAC resource package being a two-part series. So, based on this diagram, you can see that there are two session guides. So, the first session guide is on Enhancing the Digital Citizenship through Mobile uh, Technology for Teachers, or MT4D. And then the second session guide is on contextualization of the MT4D e-citizenship learning packet. So the session guide uh, one, or the LAC session one, is a prerequisite of the LAC session two. Now, each LAC session was designed to be conducted in four to six hours, but because it may be difficult to spend too much time in just a single session, we divided each LAC uh, session into two parts. So the first part basically uh, introduces the topic with activities and explanations or discussions. Now, the second part is a continuation and wrapping up of the whole session guide or the whole LAC session and it has activities by which participants can apply what they have learned or discussed throughout the LAC session. 
Now, the second quick fact is that the lack resource package builds the capacity of the ALS teachers. So, by having topics on mobile technology for teaching and learning and also uh, digital citizenship, the LAC resource package has the intention of providing uh, LAC participants with more know-how on, on how to enhance their um, proficiency in ICT or in using ICT, like giving them opportunities and ideas on how to use uh, digital technologies for direct uh, teaching, self-instruction, and learning, and eventually uh, have the necessary skill sets to effectively implement the online blended learning and also successfully guide their learners to use digital technology for um, studying and use them responsibly. Now, the third quick fact is that the LAC resource package is designed for us. So why do we say it was designed for us? Well, for one, the content has been contextualized, so that many of the examples in session guides are based on an ALS setting. And we also made sure that the language um, are appropriate to the ALS practitioners. Now, since the content was contextualized already um, to the ALS uh, setting, the resource package may be further used as a sample or model in developing future LAC session guides for all teachers. So I also would like to point out that the LAC uh, was also identified as an important uh, capacity building strategy for all teachers. Lastly, and I think this is the most important of all, the LAC resource package is aligned with the ALSK to 12 curriculum, particularly Learning Strand 6, which is digital citizenship. The goal of this LAC uh, materials is to retool the ALS teachers' concepts and skills on digital technology and digital citizenship, like uh, using mobile technology and social media for professional learning network, for professional development, and also for teaching and learning, and of course, enhancing their own skills on digital citizenship to facilitate further professional development and networking opportunities. The fourth quick fact is that the LAC resource package used the MT40 as the primary resource material uh, in developing the LAC session guide. So, as explained earlier uh, in the session from Ma'am Yoli, the MT40 is a set of materials on mobile technology developed by Simeo Inatech. So it focuses on the use of mobile technology in 21st century uh, teaching and learning and in developing cyber wellness and digital citizenship among themselves, among the teachers, and of course, among the learners. Now, the MT40 is a very good resource to upskill teachers on mobile technology and digital citizenship because there are readily available or accessible information, uh, resources, examples, and best practices in using mobile devices as tools for instruction and learning and also for teachers' professional and personal development among others. So, um, I'd also like to point out that the MT4 Key Resource Kit was recommended as a resource for us teachers in the Deped Us Learning Continuity Plan. Now, the last and fifth uh, quick fact is that the LAC Resource Package employs the four A's of adult learning. So, each session guide starts with an activity. And then the insights or the sharings from this activity uh, are analyzed and then used as inputs to discuss a topic which is already the abstraction. And then the session guide ends with an application or a set of activities that wherein the participants would be able to apply what they have learned from the last session. Other than those five which I had discussed, the LAC resource package has also other features that are good to take note of, like this one, the LAC session flow. Now, each 
uh, session guide features an illustration like this one of the session flow or structure. So from the diagram here, each session guide gives an overview of the session, enumerates the resources needed, and also the prerequisite knowledge and skills, and also relays the background information uh, about the topic, and also gives instruction on the pre lac session competency assessment. Then the guide is divided into two, part one and part two. So for part one, we have um, some writing activities, some main activities, the analysis, the obstruction, the application, reflection, and closure. But please take note that the reflection and closure under part one are not exactly the wrapping up of the, or the closing of the whole last session, but it serves as a transition from the part one to part two. Now, part two is also comprised of the same activities like the primary activity, the main activity, the analysis, the obstruction, the application, reflection, and closure. But this time, the reflection and closure already closes the whole uh, lock session. So it gives the final reflection for the whole lock session. And then the session guide ends with reminders on the post lack competency assessment and also the lack evaluation uh, form or the lack session evaluation. Now, the other features of the lack session guide also includes this. So, we have suggested ways on how to conduct the lack session, like is it via the face to face or virtual delivery? We also provided um, some background information um, containing materials about the topic which the LAC facilitators can use uh, when they conduct the LAC. And we also suggested some time frame or the number of hours for each part of each session guide. And then lastly, we have a competency assessment uh, form or we have developed um, some forms that are um, available in the LAC package and should be administered to the LAC participants. So later, I will give you an overview of the LAC uh, assessment forms. Now, the LAC resource package has also two annexes. So the first one is an infographic entitled What Works in a LAC. So I think this will be very helpful as you plan your LAC uh, session. And then the second uh, annex is the Debit Order Number 35 series of 2016, which is the policy on the LAC. So how are we going to use the LAC resource package? So I'll give you some tips on how to use it. You can refer to the set of guides uh, in the LAC resource package, which are applicable for a face-to-face -face or online delivery. And then a next tip is you should carefully study the reference materials and then conduct the suggested activities in the session guides and use the techniques uh, presented. But of course, you can do modifications. But we do recommend for you to follow the basics written in the guides. And then another tip is you can do research uh, and look for other additional materials if you need them. And I would like to stress this last tip on scheduling the uh, two parts of the last session. So you need to schedule the two parts not too far apart to make sure that the participants can easily recall the discussions and activities conducted in part one. Okay, so I've already discussed um, the introduction to the LAC uh, resource package. Um, I would like to, for us to have a one minute break or more. <laughs> um, para lang po gumalaw galaw tayo, uh, let's do a quick uh, exercise or game. So I have a set of questions that can be answered by a yes or no. Uh, so before we start, can I ask you to stand up? And please remember that you have to stand up before each of the questions. So now, uh, if you answer your, uh, 
If your answer is yes, you have to remain standing. If your answer is no, you can all uh, take a seat. So are you now ready? Okay, so question number one. Can you speak more than three Philippine languages? So let's see if there are candidate polygons here. Okay, so question number two. Uh, do you like dogs more than cats? So, sino sino kaya dito ang mga dog lovers? Okay, question number three. In a day, do you use Messenger more than the SMS or the regular text? So, let's see if who are the avid users of Messenger or Facebook here. Okay, and then question four. Uh, do you use Mozilla Firefox more often than Google Chrome? Uh, Chrome, they, I read in an article, um, it says that Chrome is faster in a desktop, but Firefox is faster naman in mobile devices. And Chrome belongs to the Google ecosystem, so you would expect that your data are stored, but uh, Firefox is more data private. But then you have the preference, or you, uh, nasa inyo naman po, if you would prefer uh, using Chrome or Firefox when you do uh, web browsing. Uh, but then if you're um, conscious about data privacy, you can always go into incognito mode or private, uh, do private browsing to make sure that Chrome or Firefox does not um, record or keep records of your cookies or histories. Okay, and then for the last question, are you ready? Okay, great. So now we can move on to the next topic, which is on the competency assessment forms. So we would like to introduce to you this pre-black and post-black competency assessment forms. Now, from the title itself, the forms take a look into the competency level of your participants before and after the lack. Now, the assessment forms are good data collection tools uh, to help you understand uh, the current level of mastery or awareness and understanding of your lack participants. And it will also give you a solid basis on how you will conduct the lock based on your uh, participants competency level and how you will implement future lock sessions so the forms are available in the uh, lock resource package and it will be administered or the forms should be administered by you as the lock facilitators and answered by the participants through self-rating now there is only one template for each uh, session guide. The only difference in the title is in the title. So we have the pre and the post uh, lack, but the content are the same. So this means that you administer the same form before part one, which is the pre lack, and after part two, which is the post lack. Now you can either administer the assessment form or the assessment, competency assessment uh, through printed form or paper or you can convert this form online and administer it through online form. Now both you and the participant will be able to track the progress, the participant's progress if you use this competency assessment forms. Now each form looks like this. So you have a set of competency statements related to the topic of the session and in columns where uh, participants can rate themselves by ticking the appropriate box. And then each competency assessment, or sorry, each competency statement is linked to a particular competency standard in the PPST. And the corresponding competency standard is indicated as the idealized text. So the encircled text here. So the rating in the form are expert, practitioner, apprentice, and novice. So expert level is when the participant is able to do the task very well and can teach others. Um, the practitioner is when he or she can do the task very well. 
Apprentice is when he or she has started doing the task but still uh, need more uh, time or opportunity to learn. And then Novice is when he or she cannot do the task yet. Now, the mastery level in the assessment forms are also aligned with the levels in the PPSD. Uh, like moving to distinguished, moving to highly proficient, and moving to proficient. So there are equivalent uh, mastery level in the assessment form to with the PPSD uh, levels. Now this is the template for the pre or the post competency assessment for lab session one. We have here eleven competency statements. Now, when you consolidate the responses from the participants, uh, what you need to look out for is the number of participants under each mastery level uh, for each competency statement. The figures will let you know which competencies should uh, be given more focus uh, during the LAC. For example, you need to look for the competency statement or the competency with the highest number of novices or apprentices. The numbers will also tell you who among the participants need further guidance or who can already be tapped to help fellow participants, uh, like those who already identify themselves as experts. Now, you can definitely use the data from these forms as you do post lab activities. Now, this is the template for the pre or the post competency assessment for uh, LAC session two. We have here seven competency statements. Now, at the end of uh, or in the LAC uh, resource package, you will find instructions on how and when to administer these forms. So this is all for the competency assessment forms. We do encourage you to read through all the materials and the forms thoroughly so you will have a good grasp of the content and how you will go about conducting the LAC. Uh, you will hear more later from our LAC uh, writers about the specifics of the LAC session guides and tips on how to deliver them. So good luck and thank you for listening. Again, uh, good day everyone. Good day everyone. I am Ineas Clamartorneo and I will give a briefing on the first LAC session guide entitled Enhancing Digital Citizenship Through Mobile Technology for ALS Teachers. This LAC session guide is a result of collaborative work from DepEd ALS field implementers, DepEd Task Force, Simeo Inotech, and UNICEF. In this video, we'll go over several things. We'll briefly present a few assumptions we've had in developing this learning action cell guide and some overview. We'll also discuss the necessary preparations you need to take to facilitate this last session. We'll go through each of the slides you will be using for the LAC session part 1 and a few tips to adapt the process to the virtual setting. The main goal here is to really prepare you in facilitating this first LAC session on MT4. So let's begin. Let's discuss a few assumptions we've had in developing this LAC session guide. First, it was designed for the face-to-face -face conduct of LAC session. We are hoping that you can use this guide for at least a couple of years to come. However, we recognize that different situations may be encountered in the field and face-to-face -face conduct might not be possible. Hence, there is a section on adapting for a virtual or remote LAC session which you can find in Attachment to A. Uh, this LAC session, each part of the LAC session is designed for two to three hours. The intended number of participants for the LAC session is about 10 ALS teachers. We have utilized the four A's of adult learning in designing the session. So we have sections on activity, analysis, abstraction, and application. 
Lastly, a script has been included in the PowerPoint slide notes. The script can help you carry out the lab session. This lab session guide is divided into two parts. The first part is entitled The Context and Relevance of MT14. In this part, we will briefly discuss the need for us teachers to learn to use the digital technologies for teaching and learning. We offer MT40 as a resource they can use and we will discuss one of its uses, which is for teachers' prefer, uh, professional development. On the other hand, the second part is entitled Exploring MT40 Resources for Digital Citizenship. Here, we will discuss the other uses of MT40, such as for professional networking and as inputs to teaching and learning, uh, with a focus on the e-citizenship learning habits. And at this portion, we will also encourage the IELTS teachers to take in initial steps to improve on a particular social media competence. We'll focus on part one for this video. For both parts of the lab session, we are hoping that ALS teachers have a few prerequisite knowledge and skills for them to fully take part in all of the activities of the lab. First, we hope that they know how to use their mobile phones and our tablets for internet surfing, that they are familiar with social media platforms such as Facebook and Twitter, and they can download, install, and use mobile and or tablet applications. Here are the objectives of part one of the first lab session on MT14. So at the end of the first part of the lab session, we hope that the participants will be able to discuss the impact of digital technology on teaching and learning, explain the available MT40 resources for teaching and learning, professional development, and guiding ALS learners on the safe and responsible use of digital technology, and explore the MT40 resources for ALS teachers' personal and professional growth. The first part really focuses on setting the context for why ALS teachers need to learn how to use mobile technologies. Here, we'll briefly look at our situation with the ongoing pandemic wherein there is a strong push for education to continue. So we can do that with the help of digital technologies. We can then offer MT40 as a resource that teachers can use to uh, equip themselves to become more knowledgeable in using mobile technologies for teaching and learning and other purposes. This is the general flow for the first part of the lab session. We have the pre-activity, which participants should accomplish before the actual lab session. During the lab session, we'll have the priming activity, the main activity, analysis, abstraction, reflection, and closure. The first part is intended for 120 minutes or two hours. Um, at this point, I would also like to encourage you to read the background information for this last session guide. Uh, the background information provides all the details that you would need to know about the, uh, about the lab session and it will really help you and give you confidence in facilitating this lab session. We need to prepare materials beforehand for the equipment we need the following laptop or tablet with appropriate cables, projector and screen, personal smart ta uh, smartphone or tablet or personal laptops for all participants, reliable in internet access for all participants during the session, and a loudspeaker. For teaching aids, we need the materials listed in the LAC session guide and prepare them in advance. I would like to highlight a few things. 
First, we need to prepare the pre-lab competency assessment tool for each participant. You can uh, print this out or convert it to an online form. Also, we need to prepare the handouts on the MT40 ebooks, and you can find them on Attachment 1, Table 2. In addition, we need two big copies of the Social Media Competency Assessment Card. You will need to transfer Attachment 3, which is displayed on the screen, onto two Manila papers. Alternatively, you can project it on the screen and request the groups to draw a 5x5 matrix on the Manila paper. In addition, it would be great if you can prepare this visual aid beforehand. You will use this table in the abstraction portion of the lab session and you will request your participants to fill this up with their uh, with the replies on meta cards. So you would need to write the headings in advance and post them on your whiteboard or blackboard. Uh, ensure that there are enough spaces in between the rows for participants' replies. Lastly, you would also need to prepare this visual aid. You will use this for the closing activity of the first part of the last session, wherein you will ask participants to give a brief assessment of the last session. Before the actual conduct of the last session, we will ask the participants to accomplish a few pre-activities. First, they should access the MT40 website and browse its resources. You can assign an MT40 ebook, a different ebook, to each participant of your LAC session. So ask them to download and read their assigned MT40 ebook. They should also watch the MT40 explainer video and accomplish the pre LAC session competency assessment checklist. So just ensure that you give the participants enough time for them to accomplish all of these things. From here on, we will be using the actual PowerPoint slides developed for this LAC session. As you might have read from the LAC infographics, it is important that we welcome participants first and set the stage. This is what uh, the title slide is for. We can welcome the participants, greet them, and brief them on the topic of the LAC. Afterward, we'll conduct a check-in activity to assess participants' readiness and give them the opportunity to share what is in their minds as a start of the LAC session. We will do this through emojis. So, we show a few emojis and ask participants what these are. You can then listen to two, three responses. We then share that the pictures are emojis and we give the description of emojis listed in the slide. At this point, you may also check on participants' awareness of social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, and simply ask who among them uses these platforms. We then distribute pental pens and papers to all participants and ask them to complete the phrase, I feel blank, by drawing an emoji which best describes their current feeling. We give time for the participants to draw. Then afterward, they will take turns in sharing in the plenary. They can simply complete the phrase and uh, offer no explanation. We then link the activity to our experience as digital citizens, recognizing that there is an emotional dimension to technology 
The script can guide you in presenting this slide, which says, We have seen that emojis can reflect our feelings. However, they can also capture emotions that we feel as digital citizens as we experience various things in using technology. For example, we feel happy when we read inspiring stories in social media. We feel angry or irritated when we see a post that we dis disagree with. We feel confused when we see varying information about a topic. In a similar way, we get to express ourselves and our emotions through technology, through our posts, comments, and other online interactions. So as you can see, there is an emotional dimension to technology. And this part is and this is part of our experience as digital citizens. We'll get to know more about digital citizenship as we use a teacher resource called the Mobile Technology for Teachers Toolkit or MT14. But before we proceed, we need to check if participants were able to do the pre-activity assignments. And if some of them were not able to answer the pre-program competency assessment form, we'll take time to do that. You may edit the slide and insert the web link to your online assessment form. After that, we then officially go to part one of the last session on the context and relevance of MT40. We then present the objectives of the LAC session for part one and part two. After the priming activity, we will have a 20-minute activity revolving around the social media competency assessment. This part hopefully measures participants' prior knowledge and understanding in the use of social media and will serve as a springboard for discussing the lab session contents. You can refer to pages 23 to 24 of the lab session guide for this part. So in this portion, the facilitator asks the participants to form two groups. Each group is requested to assign a group leader. The group then decides on a name and a symbol related to social media to represent their group. For example, the group name can be Facebook and their symbol can be a thumbs up sign. A lot a minute for participants to accomplish these two tasks. Then give each group pencil pens and a big copy of the social media competency assessment card. Each group member should decide on a particular symbol he or she will use in accomplishing the social media competency assessment card. Uh, all groups members should draw or place the symbol on the boxes with statements that are applicable to them. The group leader then tallies the number of symbols drawn by each group member so that each individual member of the group has an idea of their overall score. Uh, in the social media competency assessment card. So each group should check the boxes with the greatest number of symbols and those with only a few symbols or none at all. Each group member should take note of his or her individual scores. The group leader then facilitates sharing among group members on how they use social media platforms for different purposes. After the groups complete their group work, call on the participants and gather them to the plenary once more. We'll then try to get an idea how the participants fared in the social media competency assessment. 
And we do this by asking them to raise their hands if they scored within a particular range. You can call an each range as displayed in this slide. So here we have three levels of practice. So we'll ask who among them got scores from 0 to 7 points, from 8 to 14 points, from 15 to 20 points. After that, you can share your observations about the group. For example, if a lot of them scored within the 0 to 7 range, acknowledge that. We can also recognize that participants are at varied levels of competence. After that, we then ask the participants to share on their experience by, uh, by reflecting on a few questions. So we'll start with this question. How do you feel about the activity? Ask up to three participants to share. We will also encourage them to look deeper into their experience this by asking follow-up questions. So the, the next question is on their areas of strengths. So what were your areas of strengths as revealed by the Social Media Competency Assessment Card? How can you capitalize on these strengths? What were your areas for improvement? How do you think this lab session can help you improve? Are you aware of resources to help you improve in using social media for teaching and learning and for professional development and networking? If you are, what are these resources? How have they been beneficial to you? So you can ask up to three participants to share for each question. After that, we bridge the analysis portion to the abstraction portion of the session guide by highlighting the various possibilities provided by social media in reaching out to school stakeholders for teaching and learning and professional networking and development. Now, for the abstraction portion, there will be portions for lectures and after each key topic, participants will be requested to reflect or perform tasks related to exploring the NT40 resources. We begin the abstraction with the main topic on the impact of digital technology on teaching and learning. So for this slide, we highlight how ICT has developed in leaps and bounds with its use becoming more and more pervasive in our daily lives. Also, we emphasize that technology has brought positive and negative impacts. Uh, the script gives you an idea of these, such as being able to connect with people and access information easily, but technology can also expose users to cyber risks, such as cyberbullying, cybercrime, and overuse of technology. Here, we already mentioned the importance of understanding uh, concepts on cyber wellness and digital citizenship as well. We then highlight the perspective of ALS in the slide. To equip its learners with 21st century skills, DepEd included Learning Strand 6 on digital literacy in its uh, K-12 Alternative Learning System Basic Education Curriculum. So Learning Strand 6 aims to strengthen competencies of learners to live and work effectively as part of the digital universe. And its overall goal is to produce 21st century digital citizens who are confident in using ICT and digital tools in a responsible and ethical manner. We then present the content standards of Learning Strand 6 in this slide to show the wide array of topics tackled under Learning Strand 6. Here we mention situations that push the education sector to explore more technological ways to deliver education such as the COVID-19 pandemic. We then challenged the ALS teachers with this slide to 
to adapt and to change to address the context presented. So as all teachers at, at this time of technological advancement and education challenges, we are called forth to adapt to these changes. After presenting some ideas on the impact of technology on teaching and learning, we then encourage the participants to reflect further on this topic with the help of reflection questions. So you can ask up to two participants to share their reflections and you can also utilize a concept map in visualizing the responses. So here are our reflection questions. What are the possible uh, positive impacts of using digital technologies? What about the negative impacts? In your opinion, why do teachers need to develop competencies in using digital technologies? In the context of ALS, what opportunities can you see in using digital technologies? We have a few more reflection questions. Uh, we'll also ask them, do you see yourselves learning through digital means? How will it change your learning experience? What has been your experience so far in using digital technologies in ALS? So most probably because of the pandemic, they have already used mobile devices in reaching out to their learners. So just try to call this out and elicit these experiences from your ALS uh, co-teachers. And ask them also, uh, what opportunities do they see in using digital technologies in, te uh, digital technologies in the context of ALS? So after challenging the ALS teachers and hopefully after seeing the need to strengthen their competencies in using mobile technologies, we offer MT40 as a resource that can help them. We then define what is MT40 and we share its contents. We also provide uh, ways how participants can access the MT40 resources. We then highlight the three ways by which ALS teachers can make use of MT40. So they can use MT40 for professional development, for professional networking, and teaching and learning. For professional development, the main resource ALS teachers can use are the MT40 ebooks. The ebooks can help them enhance their teaching strategies, integrate class activities that promote higher order thinking skills, improve learner motivation and interest, and promote proper online etiquette and digital citizenship. At this point, you can share with your participants the handout on the MT40 ebooks which you can find on attachment 1 thing book 2. So that list provides the details and description for each ebook. We then share that the ebooks are available in different formats for Android devices, mobile devices that use iOS and Windows. After the brief introduction about MT40 and its potential for professional development of ALS teachers, we will then have an exercise. We will ask the participants to open their devices and access their assigned MT40 ebook. Uh, they would need to browse through their assigned MT40 ebook ebook for 10 minutes and answer the following questions. And then they would need to write their responses on meta cards. So one answer per meta card. And post them on the board. So remember, as part of preparation for the Slack session, we, uh, as the facilitator, you should have prepared the visual aid containing these four questions. So each question uh, has a particular column allocated to it and the uh, participants can 
post their responses uh, per row. Uh, so each, uh, each row will contain information about a particular MT40 ebook. So after the 10 minutes and after participants have posted their meta cards, you can read their responses. You can also ask clarificatory questions about their uh, meta cards and you can also ask uh, include or add your own inputs about the MT40 ebooks. To help the participants to reflect on their key takeaways from today's LAC session, we'll have a reflection. You would then need to give colored meta cards and pens to all participants. Each participant gets three meta cards of different colors. For the first color, request the participants to write their answer to the question, what are three things I found out about MT40 that I can use as an OS teacher? For the second meta card color, ask them to write the response to the question, what are two things I learned? Lastly, for the third meta card color, their response to the question, what is one thing that confused me? So after writing their responses, ask them to post their cards at different sides of the room. So all the same colored meta cards should go together. So for example, all answers to the first question should go together. So ensure that the questions are properly grouped now. After ensuring that all participants have given their responses, read their response to the questions. To close the LAC session, we invite the participants to share their feelings about the first part of the LAC session on MT40. So request them to grab a pencil pen and put a check on the statement that reflects their feelings. If you remember, uh, during the preparation for this session, uh, we encourage you to already prepare this visual aid to help you facilitate this part of the LAC session. We then end the first part of the LAC session with a quote from Alvin Toffler. Thank the participants for their active participation. At this point, you will need to agree with them the schedule uh, for the next lab session. You may suggest a date for part two or facilitate a consensus among the participants. Once an agreement has been reached, the facilitator reiterates the final schedule. So that ends our rundown of all the slides for the face-to-face -face conduct of the first part of the LAC session. Now, we will discuss its online adaptation. So here are a few tips on adapting part one of uh, LAC session one to an online setting. So first, ensure that you have the list of all the relevant links with you uh, uh, before you conduct your LAC session because you would need to share these relevant links at certain portions of, uh, of the LAC session. Secondly, you may consider transforming the pre-LAC session competency assessment tool into an online form. Also, as part of the priming activity, we're in, uh, we'll use emojis. So, in some social, in some platforms, it will be difficult to type their emojis or click on emojis. So, consider using emoticons instead. You can also use emoticons in the closing, uh, closing activity of the lab session, wherein you request participants to give a brief assessment of 
of the lack session. Next, think of how you can conduct the group work. So remember, as part of the main activity, uh, wherein participants will accomplish the social media competency assessment card, they will be divided into two groups. So reflect on how you will do that with, uh, with the online platform that you will be using. Next, encourage the participants to use the chat box in sharing their responses and thoughts. And lastly, consider using an online visualization tool, especially for the abstraction portion of the LAC session guide, wherein participants will share their responses to the questions uh, on the MT40 ebooks. So this is the end of our briefing on the first part of the first LAC session on MT40. I hope this has been helpful to you and see you on part two. Good day everyone. Welcome back to part two of the Learning Action Cell 1 on MT40 entitled Enhancing Digital Citizenship Through Mobile Technology for Us Teachers. I am Hias Clamor Torneo the main writer of this LAC session guide, and we will be going through the second part of the LAC to help you prepare in facilitating the session. In this video, we'll go over several things. We'll briefly look at the overview of this part of the learning action cell. We'll also discuss the necessary preparations you need to take to facilitate this LAC session. We'll go through each slide you will be using for the LAC session part 2 and talk about a few tips to adapt the process to virtual setting. Lastly, we'll mention something about follow-through. So, let's begin! You may recall this slide from the last video. Let us just briefly look into this once more. So, we've mentioned that the LAC session guide is divided into two parts. The first part is entitled The Context and Relevance of MT40. In that part, we've looked into the need for ALS teachers to learn to use digital technologies. And we've offered MT40 as a resource they can use for their own personal professional development. Part 2 now revolves around the other uses of MT40, which are for professional networking and as inputs to teaching and learning. So let's look deeper into part two. We have two objectives for part two. And these are, at the end of the last session, we expect participants to explore the various MT40 resources for professional networking and as inputs to developing learning plans for ALS learners and apply social media in the teaching and learning process and professional networking. As you may see, the LAC participants will continue to explore the different utilization and, uh, uh, of MT40. And this time, they will actually get to use MT40 to enhance a social media competency in aid of teaching and learning. Now, this is the general flow of part two. So, we have a priming activity. We'll conduct a review of the first part of the first LAC session on MT40. We'll then have a main activity focusing on professional networking experience, followed by analysis, abstraction, application, reflection, and closure. So the second part of the LAC session guide one is intended for 160 minutes or 2 hours and 40 minutes. As usual, we need to prepare materials beforehand. For equipment, we need the following. Laptop or tablet with appropriate cables, projector and screen, personal smartphone or tablet or personal laptops for all participants, 
reliable internet access for all participants and loudspeaker because this time we will be showing a video during the lab session. For teaching aids, we need the materials listed in the LAC session guide and prepare them in advance. Aside from the things listed in the LAC session guide, I've added here two things you need to prepare. First, you need to prepare pieces of paper with numbers and statements from the review section of this LAC session guide part two. Secondly, you need to prepare signages. One signage for yes, another for somewhat, and another one for you. Just to highlight something as well, you will need to provide printouts of the MT40 application template for each of your LAC participants. You can access this in attachment form. Also, we need to prepare the visual aid for the evaluation of the LAC session, particularly on assessing the attainment of its objectives. You can find this on page 41 of the LAC session guide. And we need more materials for teaching aids. All of these are listed in the LAC session guide. All right. It's time to go over the slides of part two. Welcome the participants once more and introduce yourself. Here, we'll briefly mention what we've done during the first LAC session, which was to look at the impact of digital technology in teaching and learning and discovered MT40, a resource package for teachers. This time, we'll look at other uses of MT40 as tools for professional networking and for teaching digital citizenship among ALS learners. At the start of the session, we will have a check-in activity. For check-in, we'll first ask participants who among them have a social media account. You can also ask them what social media platforms they are using. After that, Encourage them to think about their social media profile photo and strike a pose to imitate the profile photo. The participants will then take turns in doing their poses. I'm hoping that this activity will help your participants relax and have fun. Be candid as well. After we have set the mood for the lack session, We'll then have a review of what we have learned from the first part of the LAC session in MT14. In this part, we'll encourage the participants to find a partner and draw a number. Each number represents a statement related to the last LAC session. So we need to prepare the pieces of paper with the number and statements in advance. We have a total of five statements. We'll then ask the pairs to share their messages, insights, or anything that they can think of about the statement. Of course, we'll need to give the pairs a bit of time to think about their statements and organize their thoughts. Once the pairs have recalled what had happened during the first part of the LAC session, we can now start sharing. You may begin by calling on the pair that got the first statement. So here, you may show the statement so that the other participants will have an idea about it and ask the pair for their thoughts about the statement. We will do that process until all pairs have shared their views. After sh their sharing, affirm their views and thoughts, and you may also add your own insights about the statement. To aid the review further, we have this slide to help participants remember 
what they have done during the first part of the last session on MT40. After our review, we will then present the objectives of the second part of the last session. As a springboard to our discussion on the other uses of MT40, we will then have an activity. The purpose of this activity is to elicit participants' experiences on professional networking using social media. So for this portion, you will need a bit of preparation for your venue. In our list of materials, we mentioned that you would need to prepare three signages. One signage for yes, another one for somewhat, and another one for no. You would need to post these signages at different parts of the room. So what we'll do here is first, we invite participants to stand up and point out that you have three signages in the room. Uh, you would need to assign one part of the room for yes, another for somewhat, and another for no. Tell them that you will be showing a few statements. And after each statement, they would need to answer this question. Does this statement apply to you? Then, uh, they will then need to go to the part of the room that reflects their answer. So once your participants have understood the, question, the instruction, you may begin with the first statement. So here, the first statement is on, I have used social media to ask for help from other educators on a particular uh, topic. So does the statement apply to you? So go to the part of the room that reflects your response. After your participants have given their response and they have gone to the part of the room that reflects their their response you may ask a few of them to uh, to share why they answer that way in doing that we'll find out how much they have used so, uh, social media for professional networking so we have five statements for this activity Afterward, we thank the participants for their cooperation and active participation and invite them to go back to their places in the plenary. We then point out that all those statements have something to do with professional networking via social media. We we'll then encourage the participants to look deeper into their experiences with the help of a few reflection questions. So what did you discover about yourself regarding professional networking? Have you reached out to other educators using digital technologies? For what reasons? How was the experience? Are you aware of digital technologies that can support you to network with other educators? How have you benefited from the experience? How was it different from the usual means of networking? We then present that MT40 is also a tool for professional networking with other educators within the country and beyond. So we go back to this slide to briefly review the uses of MT40. So we have used this slide before during part one. Then we present ways by which teachers can connect with other educators within and beyond their current professional networks. In MT40, we have three ways, and that is through the MT40 forum, which can be found in the MT40 website, through the MT40 Facebook group for Filipino teachers, and the MT40 Facebook community page. We also share that MT40 has three dedicated e-books that can help as teachers to maximize professional network. 
First is the ebook entitled An Introduction to Teachers Personal and Professional Learning Networks for 21st Century Learning in Southeast Asia. This ebook introduces personal and professional learning networks for teachers and how to start or expand and sustain these networks through mobile devices, collaborative apps, and social media. Next is the ebook LinkedIn for Teachers, a guide in using LinkedIn as a platform for to establish and expand teachers' professional learning network. This ebook also serves as a tool to showcase their professional expertise, experience, and accomplishments. Lastly, we have the ebook Blogging for Teachers that focuses on blogging using WordPress to facilitate professional networking and education. Here we also mentioned that the other MT40 ebooks also contain sections that discuss how to harness the potential of various social media platforms for professional networking. After presenting ways by which MT40 can be used for professional networking, we'll then explore two MT40 resources for this purpose. So here, we'll ask the participants to briefly browse the MT40 forum and Facebook page. Give them 10 minutes for this part of the activity. Afterward, request two to three participants to share their thoughts on a few questions. So here are our questions. What information are available in the MT40 forum and the MT40 community page? Among this information, what seems interesting to you? Why? What benefits will you get from participating in these venues for professional networking? After that reflection, we'll then go to the last portion of our abstraction section of the LAC. Here, we will discuss how MT40 can be used for teaching and learning. We'll then share that as part of the DepEd's K-12 Basic Education Curriculum for us, Learning Strand 6 on Digital Citizenship, us teachers are called to teach us learners about the safe and responsible use of digital technology. As part of the package on e-citizenship, MT40 has 10 learning packets that teachers can readily use to discuss how to maximize online opportunities while minimizing cyber threats. These are the topics covered by the 10 e-learning packets. Being mobile, cyberbullying, cyber grooming and online exploitation, cyber stalking, internet addiction, exposure to inappropriate content, herd mentality online, plagiarism and misinformation, teen pressure, uh, teenpreneurship and trolling. We then mentioned that the e-citizenship learning packets are ready for us teachers use as they include a teacher's guide in Word and PDF versions, presentation slides in PowerPoint and PDF formats, and uh, the learning packets are aligned with the depth and basic education curriculum for ALS Learning Strand 6 on digital citizenship. We then share that four of the learning packets have already been contextualized for ALS, complete with tagging of competencies. The rest of the learning packets can easily be contextualized as well, uh, and this will be discussed in the next Slack session. We also mentioned that uh, the MT40 ebooks promote higher order thinking skills and have sections on this topic. We also present the ebook on annotated resources for teachers, which offers a wide selection of online resources relevant to teaching 21st century learning tools, higher order thinking skills and digital citizenship. After the lecture, 
we will ask the participants to browse the MT40 learning packets. Give them 10 minutes to do this. Afterward, we will ask them these reflection questions. Have you experienced or know someone who participated or heard about the common online scenarios covered by the 10 e-citizenship learning packets? In what way? Which learning packet do you think will be most beneficial to our ALS learners? How so? Which of the suggested strategies for developing uh, higher order thinking skills might work for our ALS learners? How so? To summarize the lecture, we emphasize that being a digital citizen is complex. It entails that we have sufficient knowledge, skills, and behaviors with regard to ICT, that we are aware of online risks and threats and know how to mitigate and minimize them and maximize potent, uh, ICT possibilities in our lives. The closed abstraction portion of the session will show a video on digital etiquette which is one of the behaviors we need to internalize as digital citizen. After watching the video, you can also ask the participants for their insights. Lastly, we then provide ways by which LAC participants can get help in case they have problems in accessing the MT-14 materials. So after all the lecture, the application portion of the LAC session provides an opportunity for the participants to apply their gained knowledge and learned skills. The participants will be requested to look at the results of their social media competency assessment card. So ensure that copies of the accomplished uh, assessment card are available. So each participant should select a competency he or she needs to develop. Encourage them to start with the easiest, something that they can do within the short application time and with their available uh, equipment. We will then ask the participants to use MT40 to work on their chosen competency. They would need to look for the relevant MT40 resource, read it, and apply its, uh, its recommendations. So this is the link for the MT40 website. They are then requested to accomplish the MT40 application template to show how they have utilized MT40. So this is the MT40 application template. Uh, they would need to write the social media competency they wish to enhance, the main MT40 resource they have used. For the table, they would need to put in the first column the advice or task or recommendations they got from the MT40 material. On the second column, they simply need to put a check on all the advice or tasks that they have accomplished within the time frame of the application portion of the LAC session. On the third column, they would need to check all the advice or tasks that they commit to doing after the LAC session. Participants will be given 20 uh, minutes to accomplish these tasks. Afterward, we'll then ask the participants to share what they have accomplished as reflected in their MT40 application template. Invite them to look for a pair with whom they can share their work. Give them five minutes to share, uh, to share with their partners. Afterward, call on a representative per pair to share what their partner has done. To help LAC participants identify their key takeaways and remaining questions, we will have a few moments for reflection. So we will also do the activity, the reflection we've done during the first LAC session. So you would need to give uh, 
colored meta cards and pens to all participants. Each each participant gets three meta cards of different colors. For the first color, uh, request the participants to write their answer to the question. What are the three things I found out about MT40 that I can use as an ALS teacher, either for teaching and learning uh, and or professional networking? For the second meta card, uh, request them to write the response to the question, what are the two things I learned? And lastly, for the third uh, colored meta card, their reflection on the question, what is the one thing that confused me? Afterward, request the participants to post their cards at different sides of the room. So once more, you need to gather uh, all the cards uh, pertaining to one question together. So after all the participants have responded to the questions, read uh, a few of their responses. To close the LAC session, We will invite the participants to think of one word to describe the session and call on each one of them. We then end the session with a quote from George Lewis. For the evaluation of the lab session, direct the attention of the participants on the visual aid on the assessment of attainment of lab session objectives. Invite them to assess the level of attainment for each of the LAC session objective by placing a mark along the line continuum. Request them to stand up and use markers to mark their assessment. Also, request the participants to accomplish the post-LAC competency assessment form. So you may also edit this slide to insert your online link. Lastly, thank the participants for their active participation. Remind them that they can access MT40 at this link and to join the second lab session on contextualization of the e-citizenship learning packets. We are now finished in going through all of the slides for the second part of the LAC session on MT40. So now, let's look at ways how we could adapt, uh, adapt the process to uh, the online setting. So here are a few tips on adapting the LAC session part two to the online setting. So at certain parts of the LAC session, particularly for the priming, and for the main activity, you may invite the participants to turn on their cameras. For example, for the priming activity, whenever they are, uh, when it, whenever it's their turn to strike the pose, you may ask them to turn on their camera. Secondly, you would need to think of how the pair work can be done, particularly for the review portion of the lax session. Uh, uh, you would need to familiarize yourself with the platform, with the online platform you will be using. So explore if there are ways for breakout rooms or uh, if participants could send direct messages to another person. Uh, as usual, be prepared with the links for the abstraction portion, particularly the links to the to the MT40 forum, to the MT40 Facebook community page, and the different e-learning packets. Consider asking participants to take a photo of their accomplished MT40 application template and share them in the chat box. Uh, also, I encourage the participants to share their responses to their reflection questions or any questions inside using the chat box. Lastly, you may consider transforming the post lac session competency assessment tool and evaluation forms into online forms. For follow-through, 
you may recall that we ended with the participants working on a social media competency that they have chosen. They may have taken initial steps during the LAC session, but it would be good for you as the facilitator to follow up on uh, their progress. Have they continued enhancing their skills? Have they moved on uh, to another, to learning another skill or so? You may allot a separate session on this before the second LAC, uh, LAC session or a lot a few minutes prior to the LAC session to on this matter. That's it. That concludes our orientation on part two of the first LAC session on MT40. I hope this has been helpful in preparing you for your own facilitation of this LAC session. I'm sure you will do great. Take care and have a fruitful LAC meeting. Kamusta kayo? Panay nasa mabuti kayong paligayan na saan man kayo. Ako nga pala si Teacher Noel Diaz. And thank you for being with me in this orientation on LAC Session Guide 2. This specifically focuses on the contextualization of the MT-14 e-citizenship learning packets. As you can see, this is an orientation about Part 1, the wise of contextualization. But allow me to give you a general overview. Part 1 of LAC 2 focuses on the reasons why we contextualize and it will focus on the legal as well as theoretical basis. On the other hand, Part 2 will focus on strategies, the hows of contextualization, what are trends in curricular contextualization, and this will end with an application of the knowledge and skills learned in both parts work. And two. Both part one and part two will take around three hours to conduct, but we recommend that you conduct follow-through lag sessions, an addition of four lag sessions after parts one and two that spread around two months, and that would translate to having two lag sessions conducted per month. This is the time where you will be having real hands-on contextualization experiences for the MT40 e-learning citizenship packets. As with um, any session, there are some prerequisite knowledge and skills. And you will see that for both parts 1 and 2, there are common prerequisite knowledge and skills, such as number 1, knowledge about MT40, Black Session 1. Enhancing Digital Citizenship through Mobile Technology for Teachers. So you see that this is community. After Lab 1, we move on to Lab 2. You would also need basic computer skills such as uh, using the slide presentations that come with the learning resource package. For Part 2 of Lab 2, the House of Contextualization, it follows that you should have attended Part 2, Part 1, the wise of contextualizing those lessons. Preparation would focus on three things. Number one, resources. Number two, teaching aids. And third, would be background information for the facilitator. Let's look into each of this. For both parts one and two, there are similar resources that we need to prepare, such as equipment, laptop or tablet, projector and screen, personal smartphone or tablet for the participants, as well as reliable internet access. Also would be uh, the downloaded teacher's guides and slides for MP4 T e citizenship learning packets. That's from your lab one. Uh, there are presentation slides distinct from parts one and two that comes in your package as well relevant method orders to study Manila people for charts and pens for the activities. We see here some distinct teaching aids for part one and part two. For instance, for part one, 
uh, we will be needing the pre-competency assessment tool. Also, we will be asking the participants to bring their daily lesson log or weekly lesson log for the past weeks. For part two, uh, since it's the end of lab two, we will be conducting a post-competency assessment tool. And then, um, there is an article by Fernandez and his uh, co-researchers about curricular contextualization. And uh, it is necessary that we study that so that we will have a deeper understanding of the ways to contextualize. We're done with the resources and the teaching aids regarding background information for the facilitator. You will see that that's included in your package and it is strongly recommended that even if you're run, running part one, that you study the background information for both parts one and two. In that way, you can have a bigger picture of contextualization and you will be able to appreciate the elements that are covered in contextualization. So now let's dive into part one of lab two, which is the wise of contextualization. So how will you conduct this session? Here you will see in a nutshell the different activities for the three R session that we will have. Uh, on the second column would be the activity and the third column would be the duration of each uh, activity. For preliminary activity, you will have check-in, statement of objectives, and pre-assessment. The priming activity will consist of an exhaust game regarding e citizenship and the think tank would be the main activity. Analysis would use the KMQ chart, abstraction which takes the greatest bulk of the time which is around an hour, will be a discussion of the whys of contextualization and there will be two games that will be a springboard for this and to be summarized using the KMQ chart for the application. Participants will examine the DLL or WLL. Reflection would be followed by closure. So let's try to look into each of these activities. For the preliminary activities, we start with check-in. This is a very important component. Kamustahan, kamusta kayo? This is the time to build rapport, to connect, to engage learners. And for this uh, part one, it's a very simple check-in where participants will choose icons from your slides about how they feel. This will be followed by presenting the objectives for the sessions. And this will set the direction. So you will be presenting the objectives for both parts one and two. This is included in your slides. Uh, this will help participants to have a bigger picture of what they're into. But we will let them know that for this part one, we will focus on the first two objectives. So there. With objectives done, we now move on to pre-assessment so that we can identify the competency level of participants. There is actually an online mode of doing this and your uh, resource package would detail how to do that. The next activity is a priming activity which we call an exhaust game. And this is simply word association. We ask participants to think of all terms or words that come into their mind when they hear e-citizenship. Ask them to write this down. Okay, and then uh, we will be having uh, an, a round robin wherein they will be sharing their ideas. What is e-citizenship? Take note of all the responses because we will be synthesizing this and we will be trying to classify what were your responses mainly about as it described me what e-citizenship is all about. Did they give terms such as electronic, uh, emotional intelligence? Or did they give you responses that have to do with the different topics in the e-learning package? There, with that done, we proceed to the main activity. 
which is actually a think tank where there is a prompt. And this is the prompt that we will give them, the question. As an arts teacher, why should we contextualize MP40 citizenship lessons for different ages, gender, set up scenarios, indigenous or special groups? Again, we ask them to list down their responses for this. Give them a few minutes. From there, we now discuss their responses and we list it down using this chart. Actually, we call this the K and Q chart, but the responses of the participants will be documented in the first column. What would help is that you tally how many participants would give the same response as to why did I contextualize? Why should I contextualize? That would help you in your analysis. We will use this same uh, chart for your analysis. So you will be giving questions for deeper analysis, questions such as, what did you notice about your responses? Look at the chart. What were common reasons why we contextualize? What are the least common reasons? So that would involve synthesizing. That moves us now to the abstraction, wherein uh, the whys of contextualization will be separated into two sections. We discussed first the legal basis, followed by theoretical basis. But as you can see, both will use a game as springboards for the discussion. For the legal basis, the game is called what's that word so how does that go uh, it's actually a paired word and uh, you will ask the participants to choose the word from options given a particular description they will now write their response the letter of the response on a slip of paper and they will show that after let's say 10 seconds so let's try that all of the words that we will be having with the participants are all related to the topic of part one. So come join me in this activity. What's that word? It is the educational process of relating the curriculum to a particular setting, situation, or area of application to make the competencies relevant, meaningful, and useful to all learners. What's that word? Is it A, setting related, B, contextualization, C, conceptualization, or D, competency based? Then do a countdown 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5 until 0, and then ask them to write down the letter of the response and show it to everyone. How about you? Ano po ba ang sagot nyo? So the answer is letter B. That description refers to contextualization. After giving the correct answer, this is very important that you get insights of the participants about the concept prior to further elaboration. So this goes on for all things that we will discuss to always draw from their experiences. This will help your participants to have ownership of this lock session process. It means that we acknowledge and validate the knowledge and rich experiences that they bring to the last session. Are you ready for the next word? Okay, so uh, before we go to the next word, this is part of your slide wherein you will be elaborating on why we contextualize, which is mainly to have meaningful, relevant, useful learning sessions with them. So let's go to the next word. What's that word? When we plan our lesson and consider the context of the community where the learner lives, there are some clues there in that description. Is it A, local culture, B, localization, C, indigenization, or D, community-based? And then, countdown, 10 seconds. How about you? Ano po ba ang sagot niyo? Ang tama pong sagot ay localization because it's focusing on the context of the community where the learner lives. Now, again, 
I highlight that we draw from them their insights and experiences on how they were able to localize a particular pulse lesson. After getting their insights, we now move on to discuss further what localization is. In your slides, you would have this. You can give them further examples about localization. Then you move on to the next word. What's that word? Well, there is the continuous involvement and engagement of the community or indigenous peoples, elders, leaders, or culture bearers in the validation and contextualization of the curriculum and learning resources. This is another level of contextualization. What do you think is the word? Is it A, local culture, B, localization? C, indigenization, or D, community validated. Let them show their answer on a slip of paper and then get their insights. So what's the answer? The answer here is C. This is a deeper level of contextualization, which is called indigenization. And then we further elaborate on this by using this slide in your presentation deck. And you can give some examples further examples so they can further understand what indigenization is so there so that's the game for what's that word you move on now to talk about legal basis for contextualization specifically r8 and 533 the enhanced basic education act of 2013 and section 10.2 specifically talks about the curriculum what are the standards and principles this slide is very important. You can ask them to read the slide. The participants can read the lines. The curriculum shall be learner-centered, inclusive, developmental, relevant, responsive, and research-based, gender and culture-sensitive, contextualized, and also global. So there. So we can move on. There are still items in, the, in that RA. For instance, Section F that talks about adhering to the principles of MTB and MLE. Item H talks about flexibility so that we can further enhance the curriculum. So we further discuss this with the participants. And we can see with this slide the way that uh, contextualization would further enhance the teaching learning process. With the topic identification start part patterns, you can see how different people in the community may be involved, such as uh, local practitioners or learning facilitators, and even the four walls of the classroom is not we're not limited to that, we can go beyond that, we can go stargazing, and then even the assessment may be uh, ca calibrated depending on the contextualized knowledge that we impart to our students and so would the learning resources be. So we have here an enhanced teaching learning process. Okay, so after giving the legal basis for contextualization, you can have a short break with your participants. So let's try to do that. Now I'd like you to have a bit of a screen time off. So everyone just close your eyes and listen to Teacher Nong's instructions. Are you ready? Use your eyes and inhale, exhale. Another one, inhale, exhale. Let's try now to move our heads to the right. Let's rotate it to the right and five counts. Do it with me. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's now move our head to the left, rotate it. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's now focus on our shoulders. We'll move it forward. Five counts. You rotate it around. Five, four, three, two, one. How does that feel? Let's move our shoulders backwards. Five, four, three, two, one. Stretch your two arms up in the sky as high as you can do it. And shake your hands. Five, four, three, two, one. Move your arms to the side and shake your hands. Five, four, three, two, one. At this point, 
point with your eyes closed, I request you to all stand up and repeat your hips to the right. Ready? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's now rotate you to the left. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now, you can stretch to the sky one more time and let's all sit down. Inhale. Exhale. And let's open our eyes. Okay, so let's move on now. This part now will will discuss the theoretical basis of contextualization. We started off with a cabbage wrap game. You need to prepare your cabbage. The cabbage is made of strips of paper. There are four strips of paper where you have to prepare and write a different basis of contextualization with the description. And with that, the participants will pass the cabbage around. The music is playing and the music stops. The person holding it will unwrap and read what's written there. And then they will share their insights about what was read. Further elaboration follows only after they have shared their insights. So, uh, sana nakita natin dito yung kahalagahan na parating nagmumula muna. Parating nagmumula muna sa mga participants ang mga idea bago tayo magsimulang uh, palalimin ang kanilang pamunan. Ano bang makikita natin dun sa papel sa cabbage? Okay? Ito po ang makikita natin. Uh, we will have we will have uh, constructivism, social cultural theory, motivation, and the experiential learning model. So uh, just take note that before you move on to pass the cabbage around again, that you will ask your insights after reading uh, the description, and then we further elaborate. So in your slides, you will see. This actually, we will have a description of constructivism and further examples. Constructivism is actually uh, really seeing how important it is that our participants bring with them their knowledge and their experiences, and we value that. One way is through the KWL chart, and I'm not sure if all of you are familiar with it. Usually, we use this uh, at the start of the lesson with our participants trying to share what do they know about a particular topic and as facilitators or teachers will list down, we document their responses, we further ask them what else do you want to know about the topic? Then we further list it down. How about the third column? What I learned, this is something that you answer at the end of the lesson. So this is a very good chart for like summarizing where they are at the start and where they are, the learners are at the end of the lesson. Another theoretical basis is the social cultural theory, which is really just maximizing the cultural context of our participants. And again, there are many examples that we can use. We always start from where our learners are. Another reason for contextualization that they will read in the cabbage uh, rap game is the motivation. Even as adults, we are interested in discussions where we are, uh, where we find relevance and meaning. So it's the same concept behind this. And uh, another theoretical base is the experiential learning model. And then we can ask them, what's the key word here in the description that you see on the left side? It's actually learning by doing, real hands-on experiences. And there are many opportunities to do this. Marami tayong ginagawa. Uh, lab work, field work, uh, field trips, lahat po yan ay uh, mga karanasan na mag magiging makabuluhan sa kanila. At, okay, and for this, we also discuss what are the features of the experiential learning model. And you can discuss this with them. Of course, it doesn't end with the experience because we need to process that. We need to see the connection of that. What are the uh, reflections about it in relation to the topic? And what is 
the relevance of that experience in their lives. Next to the presentation of the theoretical basis in the Tapichwa, Rep King is a review. We now put everything together and we ask them, you have already uh, listened and we have discussed the legal basis as well as the theoretical basis for contextualization. What did you notice? Is there a relationship between the two? So actually, the legal basis, the RAs that we, we have, okay, actually the stipulations there of what or what's contained there is actually grounded on the theoretical basis. They are all evidence-based. And then we can further ask them what would be the outcome when we contextualize the lessons for all learners. In, in the LAC session guide, there would be detailed uh, possible explanations for this. That's why this orientation is just a support for the LAC session guide, which you have to study very well as facilitators. Uh, from that, we can now move on. We go back to the KMQ chart. We now try to answer the end column. What is new? So this is summarizing what we have learned. What is new? What did you learn? What are the reasons for uh, contextualization? What are the legal basis? And what are the theoretical basis? So, so your chart can look something like this. It's not necessarily like this, but it can look something like this. And as we discuss the connection of the legal and theoretical, we will see that what it points to is that our delivery in the ALS classroom should be learner-centered, it should be inclusive, and there should be flexibility. As we discuss also, remember to take note and connect the second column to what is new to their uh, knowledge at the start of the session. They will then realize that they brought something to the session. Ay, yung mga sagot ko pala kanina, may alam naman ako, marami akong alam. Dito sa pangalawang uh, column, mas nagdagdagan ang kaalaman ko. Okay. And then we can further ask them now, and as we move to the next and third column of Q questions, with our discussion, do you have further questions? We document this, we write their questions down here, we try as much as we can to answer the questions, especially if it relates to the whys of contextualization. Now, for the hows, if they have question of what are other ways that we can contextualize, what are other strategies, they tell them to hold on because the next session, when they come back, would we'll deal with the strategies of contextualization. So make sure that you do not preempt it. We move on now to the application, which is they will be bringing out their DLL or WLL and they will examine it. They will sit down with pairs and try to look at different sections of it and ask, why did they contextualize this part? They will write it down and later they will share it with the rest of the group and then they will be able to see the bigger picture of why indeed did they contextualize. Reflection would follow next wherein participants will be asked to share their insights and also why is this important for me as an arts teacher, the whys of contextualization. We end the session with a closure. We have reminders for them to connect um, with the FB group perhaps of the ALS teachers. It's important to network because we have uh, something to share and we gain additional knowledge. We also uh, give things. What do they have to do? And points are very important. So closure is important. What will they do next that will connect to what they learned today? So you can ask them in the next few weeks. Try to be aware of what you do in the classroom and try to list down what are ways that I contextualize, bring your notes next time because we will talk about it and give them the schedule and we will see each other next and if they have to bring anything. So there you have it. But I know that um, not all of us can conduct face-to-face -face black sessions. Iba po ang panahon At kung yung mga lugar nyo ay hindi maaaring 
mag face to face we have included in the resource package some adaptations that you can do first you can actually create a training team if you are going to do this virtually um it is not going to be easy uh facing a monitor and then uh it's very different you will not be getting cues as usual from the usual way that you get face to face so creation of a training team wherein you can work in tandems and you will go through the session guide and assign roles for each which will you handle which will you discuss who will be managing the other features of the application or platform that you will use who will read the chat box who will look at those who are raising their hands okay so that would help you with um, managing the session because multitasking is not very easy especially if you're doing it for the first time should you feel that you should use the learner's model tongue that's perfectly fine that is actually a form of contextualization uh, what will help you further would be to go through the last session guide okay? and then try to study the parts where you think that it is important to use the mother tongue to bridge understanding, make notes, and so that when you present the slides that come with the package, they are all in English. And it will not be very easy to translate right there and then. That's why you need to prepare for it and refer to your notes. Now, for the virtual setup, I have some general reminders for you. Okay. Rapport building is important. It's essential that you connect, that we connect. That's why the first five minutes, the first 10 minutes of your session, especially the check-in is very, very important. Um, what could help you here is if it's possible, okay, ask the participants to turn on their videos. Maganda magkamustahan na nagkakaharap, na nagkakausap, nakikita natin ang mga mukha ng isa isa Let's have a warm, uh, a warm atmosphere. Let's try to nurture and develop that warm atmosphere. Have a friendly, friendly tone. Okay, so napakamahat, napakahalaga po ng unang sampung minuto sa virtual setup. So take advantage of that. Um, okay, it's also important that whatever platform you plan to use, that you are familiar with the features of that. So take time. Take time to study it so that you can have more opportunities to engage your participants. Um, there are many features such as raise your hand, showing uh, the faces. Um, there are also chat boxes and many other features. Take time to study that and show the participants how to use the features so you can really engage them in different parts of your session. It's important also to have a system for sound checking and share screen checking. Um, you waste or we waste time when we are not sure if we are being heard. So we can, that's why having a tandem would help. The tandem, your partner, your training team, uh, or partner could let you know how's the sound, are you audible, is the uh, screen that you're sharing already visible to everyone so that you could easily adjust. Okay. Another guideline is invite and encourage participation. So how do you do that? Um, what would be a general recommendation would be to make sure that every 10 to 15 minutes, you are sure that your participants are still with you, especially if you have their, if their cameras are turned off. So how do you ensure en engagement? Try to throw questions every now and then, help them uh, let's say before the what's that word game, are you ready? Show a thumbs up and then you can check if someone's someone is not uh, showing a thumbs up, you can perhaps tell them or you cannot if you cannot use the feature, say yes in the chat box. So there are many ways that we can invite and encourage them and give them a lot of appreciation when they do. Tell them I'm very happy that you're all showing your thumbs up. Uh, that you're giving me feedback this is helping me move on i hope you will continue so just encourage them show them how happy you are an important 
aspect also is to provide breaks. It's not easy to sit for a three-hour session. And uh, there can be many forms of break. It can be a CR break, get your food break. It can be a relief exercise. It can just be a simple um, meditation experience for them that can be like just for two minutes. So make sure that you have a lot of breaks. It can be if you have a bit of games or movement activity where you can all just move, that would be perfect. Now, let us go to specific adaptations for particular activities in this session. In the exhaust game, wherein you are not in a circle and uh, they will not be able to share their responses one, one after the other, you can just assign them numbers and tell them that they have to remember the numbers and they have to share all the ideas that come to their mind about, about uh, easy decision. There's also, if you're using Zoom, there's a rename feature there that you can explore so you can navigate it better. You can actually put numbers in front of their names for the what's that word game. Instead of a paired activity, you can have an individual activity. How do you engage them? Tell them to type the responses of the word in the chat box. For the cabbage wrap, you cannot, of course, pass the cabbage around. What you can do is you can have your presentation slides. You can number them. They can choose a number. And the number you choose is the theoretical base that you will first discuss after they have shared their insights about for the application, you would have to ask them to send to you in whatever uh, uh, feasible way to, sh to share with the facilitator, their DLL or the DLL. They have to send it like a week before the session. It can also be through Epi Messenger. The main point being that you have access to our to the DLL, they will no longer work in pairs, but you will screen share their DLL and we will all work together, go to certain sections of it and identify reasons uh, why that part of the lesson was contextualized. Responses can be given orally or in the chat box. The reflection can be oral sharing or we can type in the chat box. The beauty of the chat box is given a question, all of them can be responding at the same time. It's necessary that you process the responses in the chat box. So I'd like to summarize the adaptation points in this through this slide. So what is our main point? In a virtual session with uh, our participants, we actually want to keep the energy level high. We want to make sure that we're able to engage and connect with them. If possible, uh, we want to replicate. You can see in the last, uh, the last box, we want to replicate the face-to-face. -face. And how do we do that? We need to transform the delivery. How do we make it alive? How do we get their responses, hear their voices? We need to really prepare questions every 10, 15 minutes so that we do not really do a lecture or a monologue in the session. So it becomes highly interactive so there you have it um if you read the session guide further there would be detailed instructions there even um, a guide for how you will discuss so study that very well and i'm sure that you will be able to conduct lab two part one very effectively okay Bye. Remember to keep safe wherever you are. Kaya nyo yan. Good luck. Hi. Welcome back. I'm Teacher Nong Diaz. And welcome to the orientation on Lack Session Guide 2, Part 2. This focuses on the contextualization of the MP40 e-citizenship learning packet, specifically the house of contextualization. You are already done conducting part one and now we focus on the strategies for contextualization. We talk about trends here in this session and we move on to an application by 
really putting into real life experience the knowledge and skills learned from parts one and two. This will run for around three hours, but we strongly recommend that you have follow through lab sessions, a total of four after the session that's spread around two months, and that's that actually translates to having two lab sessions conducted a month wherein you will really apply contextualization concepts and principles in the MP40 e-learning packets. So in line with requisite knowledge and skills, since this is cumulative, this is lab 2, you would need knowledge about lab session 1, which focused on enhancing digital citizenship through mobile technology for teachers. And because this is lab session 2, part 2, there is a necessary prerequisite for understanding the, the reasons for contextualization in part 1. Aside from that, you will need basic computer skills such as familiarity with slide presentations. The slide presentation is actually part of your learning resource package, so take a look at it. As in anything, we need to prepare. Kailangan po tayong maghanda ng mga bagay na to. So, that would include resources, teaching aids, and background information for facilitators like you. Again, that's included in the resource package. Make sure that you study that so that you have a bigger picture of contextualization and you appreciate the elements in line with that. Let's move on to the resources. So, uh, these will be the same resources as in Part 1, Equipment, Laptop or Tablet, Projector and Screen, Personal Smartphone or Tablet for the participants, and we hope that you have reliable internet access. For the teaching aids, you would need the downloaded teacher's guides and PowerPoint slides from Lab 1 and P40 Easy Leadership Training Packets. There are presentation slides for this session. An understanding of relevant method orders is important, and for the activities, you would need Manila paper and pens. There is also a need to prepare the post competency assessment tools. This is the end of that tool, and also uh, there is an article by Fernandez and his co researchers about curricular contextualization. You can further study that. The link is available in the resource section of the package. We can now dive into the house of contextualization. How do we conduct this part two? In a nutshell, what you see here would be the different activities for the session and the duration of each activity. We start with the preliminary activity of check-in and presenting the objectives. The primary activity focuses on a round robin sentence completion. And the main activity is actually a pictorial representation of their ideas about ways to contextualize. The analysis will use a semantic web. The abstraction, which is the meat of this session, will start with a chapter better scheme before the discussion. Application is twofold. It focuses first on contextualizing e citizenship lessons and drafting an action plan. The closure happens after the reflection of key insights and it ends with a post assessment of lab 2. Okay, let's now move on to the preliminary activities. We start with a check in. As I mentioned in the other orientation, this is very important. The first 10 minutes is when we build rapport, we engage, we connect, we create a climate wherein our participants will be comfortable. Sana po uh, magkaan ang loob nila para makisali sa session po. And for this activity, the check-in is simple. They introduce themselves and share how they feel. For instance, I can say, I'm teacher now. I feel grateful. 
So ask the participants about this, then share the objectives for the session to set the direction. And uh, the objectives here would focus, as you can see, on the different strategies for contextualization and how we will be applying this to the activities thereafter. The primary activity is actually to connect this to part one. And that would be around Robin Seven's completion. Part one consists of why we contextualize and we will review the results for contextualization. So participants will complete the statement, I contextualize for my Alzheimer's because or I contextualize for my all learners so that. So make sure to summarize um, their responses and if they missed something in line with the whys of contextualization, let us try to include that in our synthesis. The main activity is an inquiry-based development activity with a question from all why do I contextualize for my false learners? And they will show the response through a pictorial representation. This is an individual activity. You can give them five to eight minutes for this, after which they will share with a partner and they will share with the entire group. What will help you with this is this semantic web of ways to contextualize. So when you are already in the group sharing and they are uh, showing you the ways they contextualize, make sure that they document their responses through this semantic web. Why is this important? This will help you in your analysis aspect of the last session and then you can ask them other questions as to the ways they contextualize, uh, make sure that you synthesize the responses. And these are some questions in the analysis check section. What did you feel about the equally based deepening activity? What contextualization strategies are we currently doing for different ages, gender setup scenarios, indigenous or special groups? And what are our common contextualization practices? What are not commonly done? And you can discuss this because the semantic web would actually depict the practices of the participants. We further ask why do we have to contextualize for our house learners again to connect with part one of the ones of contextualization with analysis done. You move on now to the abstraction, which is the meat of this session. That is done through a game, which is the springboard for the discussion of the contextualization strategies. So I'd like to show you that game. I hope you can join me. Handa na po ba kayo? Sasali po ba kayo? Sana po, sumali kayo. Now, these, all of the terms that we will encounter in this game, would be coming from the article by Fernandez where in they study different trends in contextualization from a big number of teachers and they summarized it according to what you will find out in this game. Okay, so what contextualization strategy is this focusing on? when it takes into consideration the location is the keyword of the students to deliver the lesson. So what's your answer? Give them like 10 seconds to answer this. Ask them their experience in play-based contextualization. And then you can dive into a deeper discussion into that the slides in your package should show you this slide where in there will be more examples. And it is important that you connect this discussion to part one 
what would be place-based ideas that you learned in the Hawaii's contextualization? That would be localization, right? So there, your session guide will give you elaborate discussion on how you would be discussing this with the participants. Let's move on. What is this contextualization strategy where you plan the lessons and emphasize the center of the learning process? So who is the center of the learning process? So the focus on the, yes, student. So again, as their insights and their practices in line with this before you dive into a deeper discussion of how this is done. This is when we take into consideration the characteristics of our students, their capabilities, what are their interests, and we try to incorporate that uh, in the way that we deliver the lesson. Next, what contextualization strategy would focus on the instructional strategies and processes that the teacher uses, which leads to a better understanding of concepts. So this is something that you do. What is the work? It's based on pedagogical practice. So what are the instructional practices that we do? One example of this is when we try to integrate the lesson to other subject matters and some other concepts. And in that way, uh, they will be able to better grasp the lesson because connections and relevance to other areas would be highlighted. Let's move on to another contextualization strategy. Are you ready for this? The clue is planning of lessons in the curriculum which acknowledges the unique identity of every student regardless of his or her cultural background. What's that? I think that's easy. Okay. Let me just uh, underscore this. We are using these games to engage the participants, but they should not take so much time. So in case they are not able to guess the word, you can give more clues. For example, you can say that this first word starts with R. Okay, so this is, this should not take much time. So what is this? This is respect for the diversity as the insights of the participants. This is actually celebrating the uniqueness of every learner in our classroom, regardless of who they are, as ways that they are able to do this. Let's move on to the next strategy that would be uh, a contextualization that addresses the concepts or subjects that students find hard to understand. What do we do about these content concepts? This is based on, what is the word? Disciplinary context. So you may ask them, for certain concepts that are difficult to understand, let's say math or science, how do you simplify it? And from their experiences, you can now dive into giving more examples. So there. Now that you have presented the different strategies and we have connected it to part one to the whys of contextualization, we can ask these questions. Did you notice how these approaches overlap? They are not distinct in themselves. In what ways do these approaches overlap with the concepts of indigenization and localization of them in order to do Actually, there is a great overlap, which shows us that the, the content of part two is not distinct from part one. And we can further ask them, how can we apply this as we contextualize our e-citizenship lessons to address the unique circumstances of us learners? We move on to what would be the outcome when we contextualize the lessons from students. 
So I would like to stress at this point the need for connections. We do not discuss, for example, the session in isolation. We want them to connect it to point one and even to lack one. Okay, so I hope that we keep this in mind. But when we do this, there is greater understanding of the process we're trying to move forward. Application is actually full. First, uh, we would want our participants to contextualize the e-citizenship decisions. And second, to draft an action plan. So we want them to look at the different packets and focus on a particular packet. And then we actually name specific ways of contextualization in line with that e citizenship packet. We further dive into approaches of contextualization that should be used for designing the lesson for us learners. So that would be that would be the specific example. What we highlight here is that. The, as facilitator, we have to model this contextualization. What does that mean? It means that we will be the one to initially start filling this uh, suggested template after choosing a particular easy relationship packet. We try to recommend appropriate contextualization approach and specific examples. And from there, we try to invite them to join as we move on to other ways of contextualization, when we are comfortable that they can do it on their own, it's when we divide them into pairs or groups to work on this activity. What is also very important here is peer review and feedback sharing. After they have done it on their own with their group mates, they are to share it with the group and everybody shares their voice about how it's done. Maybe they can give other ways of further uh, enhancing the form of contextualization that was recommended. This is to highlight that uh, more brains are better than one. We are not able to see it on our own and the uh, inputs of other members of the group would make our outputs richer. From there, we present some guide questions for contextualization. There are a number of slides in line with this in your presentation. And uh, what I have here is just the first slide. So from their output, we want to further ask them if there were new concepts presented in real life situations. And uh, did they take advantage of the local environment? Did they take into consideration the profile of the learners with focus on the students? Are, are the concepts and examples presented in the context of their use? So this is to further go back to their outputs and to further refine it. And I think this will be in the health. From there, uh, the second aspect of the application is crafting a two-month action plan that includes priority MP40 easy citizenship learning packets for contextualization. And we have to look into the learning competencies to address. Also, a component to include is micro-teaching as research has shown that when we micro-teach, we are further able to refine our what else is the plan for the group for sharing the learning packets with other arts teachers? There is a lot of information or ideas generated here, so it's just appropriate to share it with others. So we ask them to include it in the action plan. The, the guide would include a template for this to help the participants and to help you as you try to craft an action plan with the participants. It would include objectives, activities, target dates, and the point person for things. 
So we hope this will help you with the application done. We move on to reflection of sharing of key insights. So aside from your key insights, we ask them, what will I do now that I was not doing before in line with contextualization for our moment. So this is further crystallizing their learning from this session. For closure, of course, it's important to give reminders that they they can connect. There's a network for you. The ALS FB group, if you have that. And what do they have to do? What's the schedule for the next sessions? What do they have to bring you there? Tasks and finished. What do they have to bring? And the closure ends with a post lack session competency assessment. Let's move on now to adaptations. We understand that not everyone would be able to deliver this lack session face to face. So if it's not safe for you, we have some recommendations such as the creation of a training team. You can have a tandem. It would be easier for you to conduct it with someone. So you can have a pair, you can look at the session guide, assign roles, and then that would be easier for you rather than a single individual multitasking everything. So a sign is going to discuss all the ideas, it's going to look at the chat box, it's going to look at the responses of the participants. And if you're going to use your learner's mother tongue, that's the key. Just make sure that you plan beforehand, study the session guide, which parts will you do using the mother tongue to reach the concepts. It's not going to work that you translate from the English presentation slides because that will not allow a smooth flow of the last session. For the virtual setup, I have the same reminders as in LAC 2 Part 1. For building, let me just highlight this again. The first tension, 10 minutes rather, of your virtual setup is very important. Make sure that you are able to connect, that they are the participants are comfortable with having their voices heard. They have to experience that that rapport so that they can be able to participate actively in the three hours. It's important that you take time to familiarize yourself with the features of the platform of every day. Is it Zoom? Is it Teams? So just make sure that you explore so that you can navigate and take advantage of all the features of that. Of course, you have to show the participants how to use the features, whether it's a chat box, that's the, the different icons, the raising of hands, the showing of happy faces, and uh, make sure that you have a mechanism to sound check and to share screen check. Having a partner with you as a facilitator would help you so that you get immediate feedback whether you are able to put across what you want to put across. This is one of the more challenging aspects to invite and encourage participation. Um, I would recommend that every 10 to 15 minutes you check if your Participants are still with you. Nandun pa ba sila? Baka may iba na po silang ginagawa. Dahil naka-off ang camera nila. So the way to to hear their voices and to make sure that they are still engaged is to throw questions every now and then for the jumbled letter games. Rather, jumbled letters game, ask them, handa na ba kayo? Show a thumbs up. And for somebody who doesn't show a thumbs up, you can call on them and ask how they are. Equally important is providing breaks. It's not easy to have a three-hour lag session. So you make sure that you have different kind, kinds of breaks. You can have uh, CR breaks, get your food break. You can have uh, meditation breaks, screen off time breaks, relief exercises. You can have that every 30 minutes, 
uh, just keep in mind that we cannot keep them engaged for three hours straight. Now, uh, the key points in the adaptation that I'd like to highlight would be to keep their high energy level and to make sure that we are able to engage them and we're able to connect is we have to transform the delivery to replicate the face-to-face. -face. I think this is, if you just keep this in mind, then we can make sure that we are able to find ways in the virtual setup how to make this happen. And specifically, for example, for check-in, we can ask them to turn their camera on. It's important for us to see how they are. There are different ways of checking in. In some of my sessions, for example, I would ask them, how are you? You're not supposed to talk so with an action and we will guess how you feel. So there are many ways to try to be innovative. For the round robin sentence completion, uh, we can have an individual activity. There are not, of course, in a circle so you can assign numbers find the features in your platform that will allow you to do this and you can of course also use the chat box um, and that would give you immediate responses for the sharing of pictorial representation this will invite you to, to uh, have your participants share their digital drawings in a digital platform they can take shots of of their uh, drawings and they can share it through the messenger whatever is accessible for for your participants for the think bear share you can assign partners in digital platforms there can be fb messenger uh, assignments or some uh, platforms would have breakout rooms so try to navigate and learn more about that for the analysis section you can share screen the semantic web. Do you know that you can annotate while you are sharing the screen? For example, in the screen I'm sharing, I can actually write text here at this point. So try to check if your platform allows that and how that is done. For the abstraction, again, the way that I did it, I shared the PowerPoint slide and I showed you the jumble that you scheme your participants can share the responses in the chat box for the application um, you can prior to your session send the templates the different templates for the for the activity to your participants and then uh, for the guided activity uh, you can share the screen and use the annotation feature of your platform if that's possible it is also possible that everybody can annotate at the same time. They can write on this screen, for example, all at the same time. But try to manage that, whatever is uh, best for your session. For the reflection, um, how do you try to replicate the face-to-face? -face? Ask them to answer in the chat boxes. And the beauty of that is that they can answer all at the same time. Uh, or you can ask them to share their responses orally make sure that you synthesize their reflections i have additional notes for you for succeeding lack sessions it is very important that you monitor the post lack activities how are they progressing are they able to accomplish what you have asked them to do hold succeeding lack sessions as mentioned four sessions over two months, further discuss the action plan on contextualization, what are stumbling blocks, how can you further help them, continue work on contextualizing the lessons on digital citizenship because that is the main output that we expect from the LAC session. And then in writing and reviewing the contextualized DLL or WLL, um, we want our participants to identify and include the learning competencies from the K-12 back for us because this is the only way that we can make it relevant. We can either work collaboratively in groups or through a self-paced activity depending on the comfort level of your participants. What is important is there is peer review. After outputs are done, 
we try to critic it, we try to share ideas from others so that we can further polish it. And of course, we seek technical support from local experts. When the contextualized DLL and the WLL in line with the MP40 learning packets are already done, we include micro teachings of the DLL to further refine the DLL. And then we validate the outputs by sharing with a network of all teachers in your FB group, perhaps, or in other uh, formats. And um, we can share good practices and insights. For instance, when they used the DLL, in what ways did they adapt it, the revisions, and what were the outcomes? There's so much knowledge generated from your contextualizing experience. And it is important that we disseminate this with others. Sayang naman po, di ba? Kung hindi naman magagamit na mas maraming arts teachers. So there. It's now time to stand up and stretch a bit. You are now ready to run the lock session 2, part 3. Sigurado ko, kayang-kaya nyo yan. So to an effective lock session delivery, Good luck. Remember to keep safe and keep well. Bye from Teacher No. Hello, good afternoon to all. Uh, they say it's TGIF. Uh, thank God it's Friday. But I think, uh, thank God all the more for today. Uh, why do I say that? Because today has been uh, very enriching, uh, very informational, uh, is full of hopes for everybody. Like what uh, our other officials mentioned earlier this morning during the opening protocols and what Philip just mentioned earlier, the good thing about uh, this activity that we are having right now is that there is a ready resource package which we can actually implement and use as needed and the most important part is that this has gone through uh, a tedious process i remember us talking about uh, coming up with this lack resource package early on after we had that uh, training on the MT40. And from then, we, we had to seek out what would be the prioritized uh, training needs our teachers would, would want to have. And finally, we had a session guide writing and so on. And now we have this document which our teachers can readily use in their own respective stations and field offices. I'm very thankful, of course, to this tripartite partnership, especially to Simeo Inotech. Uh, may I mention uh, Director Ramon Sibakani, of course, for the all-out support every time that ALS Task Force has this initiative to, to implement in the field. And of course, Sir Philip, Mom Yoli, uh, Ben, Kat, Ori, uh, Mary Beth and everybody from Simeo Inotech, thank you so much for for the guidance. And of course, from UNICEF, EC, Payne Gold, Miss Melton, and Abe, thank you so much as well for always being with us in making sure that our roadmap is implemented. As you see, we value very much our teachers being at the heart of the learning intervention in ALS. We always want that our teachers will be uh, prepared, be given the right skills, be retooled, so that they will be able to deliver the services that are expected from them. May I also mention the ALS Task Force family, of course, uh, the focal person, Dean Banzuela, uh, thank you for being so patient as well in making sure that everything is prepared and delivered uh, effectively. Sure, there are problems along the way. Problems are inevitable, but these problems give meaning to our work. 
because we have to come up with ways and means to go over them. And today is just a clear re representation of that. Uh, pre being prepared, however, in the course of implementation, we always uh, meet challenges along the way. And that I think will, will happen as well as we go through implementation in the field. But the good thing is that these are lessons we learn every day and we improve on the lessons that we take in. So good luck, everybody. I'm very happy that the entire region is represented in this orientation, but we look forward all the more uh, what will happen in your regions from today, as this is just the, the beginning. This is the orientation. The real action will happen in your own respective regions and divisions. So thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend ahead and keep safe and healthy always. Maraming salamat po at magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Asekil Chambat, Director Marileta Almeida. Good afternoon, the staff of the ALS Task Force. Good afternoon, Director Ramon Bacani and staff of Simeon Tech. And good afternoon to the regional ALS focal persons, to ALS key trainers and officials representing the Department of Education regional offices and the division of offices. Good afternoon, everyone. Today marks a key milestone for the capacity building component of the technical support to ALS 2.0. This is a collaborative partnership between DEPET ALS Task Force, Simeo Inotech, and UNICEF Philippines. The session guides containing the LAC resource package were developed to consider topics to help address some of the challenges of using technology in education. These challenges that are very uh, relevant you know, in this, in this COVID-19 context. And this includes enhancing the use of mobile technologies in teaching and also contextualization of e-citizenship learning resources. I know that you have all been very busy today for, uh, for the orientation and planning on MT40 LAC resource packet utilization and monitoring. And I hope the whole day session has helped you prepare uh, on how to use the resource package. And we really hope that this will be very helpful and, and useful for, for the ALS learning. I would like to recognize the invaluable contribution of those who work behind the scenes in realizing the LAC resource packet. And this includes official and staff of the Department of Education ALS Task Force and Simeo in Africa. UNICEF uh, Philippines continues to find it a pleasure and a privilege uh, working uh, with, uh, with you as partners for improving the education in the Philippines. And we know that the ALS system is uh, one of the areas that have been most affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, for example, in terms of enrollment, uh, when we compare last year to, to this uh, year, there has uh, been a significant reduction. So, but at the same time, I know that the ALS system is resilient and the motivation and the passion of the ALS teacher, the ALS learner, will overcome these challenges. We at UNICEF hope that the session guides in the package will enable you to better use ICT, teaching your ALS learners, especially during these times when we are really relying heavily on the use of technology amidst the pandemic restriction. The LAC session guides and assessment tools are uh, pioneering efforts in ALS, which we hope can serve as a reference model in developing uh, customized LAC materials for other topical, uh, topics relevant to ALS. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, thank you very much for um, the pleasure of uh, working together for allowing UNICEF to be part to be part of this initiative, and and thank you so much for all the efforts that you are doing to to improve the ALS system, especially when the the challenges are bigger. You know? And I think uh, uh, this requires uh, even bigger. Um, more inspired response. And this is what we are seeing with the efforts of the Department of Education, 
uh, and with partners of Cineo in Australia. So thank you so much, and, and thank you, thank you for for the opportunity. Let me thank our partners from the ALS Task Force. Uh, Assistant Secretary G.H. Ambat and Director Almaida, thank you for finding the time to be with us today. Of course, big thanks to our ALS key trainers who actively participated throughout the day. Thank you as well to our partners from UNICEF Philippines for their support and help in finalizing the LAC resource package. Good luck everybody in trying out the LAC session guide. Thank you and good luck. Thank you. God bless us all. We'd like to inform you that the LAC resource package on MC40 may be accessed from the DepEd ICT for ALS website under the ICT resources. Just tap Digital Citizenship Supplementary Resources. The page also features related materials like the MT40 ebook on e-citizenship and the right-click podcast series on digital citizenship and cyber wellness. So happy browsing everyone! Lastly, for any questions or concerns, please contact us through our email accounts or visit our websites to send your inquiries and we will be happy to assist you in your MT40 journey. Bye everyone!